Hello everyone, happy to see you here, welcome back to my channel Hi Mathematics. Today we have really interesting, I would say like a relaxing exponential equation, a to the x plus 2 to the x equal to 30. Right now we can easily pause the video to solve this challenge by yourself, write your suggestion down into the comment section, write your solution down into the comment section, and in a few minutes we will check your answer, so it will be a really interesting practice question for everyone. So a to the x plus 2 to the x equal to, equal to 30. Right now let's think how can we solve this question. First of all we have all different bases, 30, 2, 8, so it's hard to work with with things like that because it's really great to have the same base okay so right here if you look closely on the left side we have eight and we have two from school you need to know that uh, two cube equal to eight okay so right now let's change this eight instead of this eight let's write two cube it changes nothing but it helps us a lot let's do the thing right now so instead of this eight on the left side let's write two cube and we need to raise this to the power x don't forget about this okay plus right here we have 2 to the power x so absolutely the same expression and equal to equal to 30 really great right now if we look closely we have expression that looks like that and from school you need to know that if we have a to the power m raised to the power m so expression looks like that we need to multiply our m times n but i don't need this exactly this expression when we change position of n and m right here when we write a to the power n raised to the power m we can easily do this because this is multiplication we can easily write n inside parenthesis and m outside so according to this equal sign when we have equal sign all the time when we look on the on this expression and to this expression we can easily see that we can swap our our powers n and m right here we can easily swap it and we will have absolutely correct expression so according to this property let's apply apply this rule right here so let's swap this 3 and x places let's do this thing right now as a result we have 2 to the power x goes inside and 3 goes 3 goes outside, okay? So right here we have 3. So plus, the next thing we have 2 to the x and equal to equal to 30. Really great. So I hope you understand this step. Someone can call this a rule of interchange. Someone called this as a, like basic power property. But I hope you understand this step. Right now, as I told before, we have absolutely the same base, absolutely the same power. So we can easily simplify it in terms of substitution. Okay? It helps us a lot because right now we're going to write a substitution. Our substitution looks like that. So let's write this thing. Let 2 to the x is equal to, for example, let's go with y. Okay, 2 to the x equal to y. But y need to be positive because we are talking about exponential function. So this function on the left side is all the time positive. Doesn't matter what the power of x, all the time we have a positive value of, of y. So this is a really important moment for us. Y is, is positive. Okay, so let's apply this substitution right here. What do we have right here? We have y cube, y cube plus y equal to equal to 30. And right now, instead of this exponential part, we have basic cubic equation. Okay, right now let's solve it. There are a lot of approaches. How can we solve this cubic equation? But first of all, let's bring all of the thing from right to left. As a result, we have right here y cube plus y and minus 30 equal to equal to zero. There are a lot of approaches and this is up to you. How can you solve this question? I solve this question like that. First of all, I see that we have here a third power and somehow we can easily we can easily express this 30 with the cube. Okay, how can you do this? Of course, 27 plus 27 plus 3. Let's do the thing right now. So instead of this 30, we have y cube plus y. Instead of this 30, let's write 27 plus 3. It changed nothing for us, but as I told before, 27 is equal to is equal to three cube. So somehow we can easily group this cube and this cube right here. Okay, let's do the thing right now. First of all, let's open parentheses. Of course, if this is absolutely the same thing, so it changed nothing. So right now let's open parentheses. We have y cube plus y minus 27 and minus 3 equal to 0. Right now, as I told before, instead of this 27, we're gonna plug in this 3 cube. Okay, and I, I want to say right now that this is not a basic method. It happens right here that we can express it as a cube. Okay, so it happens right here, and I apply this method. But this is not a basic general method. How can we solve cubic equation? This is just in case right here we can solve this question like that. If we have a cubic equation like um, we have like for example 31, we can't solve this question like that. We need to find another approaches. Okay, this is very interesting, important information. So okay, so instead of the 27, let's write three cubes. So we have y cube plus y minus 3 cube and minus 3 equal to 0. Right now, as I told before, let's group it. Let's group y cube and 3 cube. Let's do the thing right now. Let's let's group it. As a result, in first parenthesis, we have y cube minus 3 cube. This is our first parenthesis. And we have plus y minus 3. 
So finally, we, we group it, we have the third power in this parenthesis, we have the first power in this parenthesis. Right now, basic school formula, basic school identity, we have difference of two cubes, so let's apply our, our formula, difference of, of two cubes. First of all, what do we have right here? We have y minus 3, and we have also another parenthesis. We have y square, y square plus 3y, and plus 9, plus 9. And plus y minus 3, don't forget about this, plus y minus 3. And the final tricky move right here, we have y minus 3 in the beginning, so in the first product, and we have y minus 3 on the light's right side of this addition sign, so we can easily factor this y minus 3. Let's do the thing right now. As a result, what do we have right here? y minus 3, and we will have another parenthesis. In the first parenthesis we have this one, and in the second we have 1, so right now we need to add it. We have y square plus 3y and plus 9. And don't forget about this one. This is extremely important thing. Well, plus 1 equal to 0. And the final step right here, 9 plus 1 equal to 10. So after this step, we can easily say that we factor this question. So let's do this. So we have y minus 3. And in the second parenthesis, we have y square plus 3y and plus, plus 10 equal to zero. Really great. Right now we can easily say we factor our question. So a product of two parentheses equal to zero when the first parenthesis equal to zero or the second parenthesis equal to zero. For example, let's start with the second one. Let's split it by two parts. We have quadratic equation y square plus 3y plus 10 equal to zero. Let's start. Let's see what will happen when we find, for example, discriminant. Let's see what will happen. So discriminant from school, you need to know that this is equal to b square minus 4ac. As a result, we have b square. We have 3 square minus 4 times 1 times 10. As a result, we have 9 minus 40. And this is really important moment right now because we have minus 31. So it tells us that right here we have two complex, two complex two complex roots right here we have, okay, because the discriminant is negative, so when we plug in this negative discriminant, we will have like our complex unit i, and as a result, in terms of complex numbers, we will have like two, two roots, okay, the first one and the second one. So if you're interested, if you want to practice your your uh, complex number, if you want to practice your, your quadratic equations, you can easily solve this challenge, but I don't want to do this because uh, this is really interesting moment right now. We have y second and y third, uh, are complex right here we have complex root and I, I want to tell right now why I don't want to find this y second and y third according to this quadratic equation because uh, remember that in the beginning we had a substitution so 2 to the x equal to y okay and right now when you find this complex number you need to solve this question according to exponents we need to plug in these complex numbers right here so we have 2 to the x equal to y y is a complex number doesn't matter so it's a little bit complicated okay so you don't need it if you want to just if you solve this question in your exam i hope this information is absolutely enough for you y second y, y third these are complex roots but if you if you teach a need from you that you need to solve this question completely you can easily plug in this complex root in this equation 2 to the x equal to first y second and 2 to the x equal to y third so this is about this right side on the left side we have y minus 3 equal to 0 okay and y equal to 3. And this is much easier for us to plug in 3 instead of this y, okay? Because we will have like a real number root. As a result, when we have 2 to the x equal to y, okay? 2 to the x equal to y, but y equal to 3, okay? From here, but y equal to 3. So we have like our equation 2 to the x equal to 3. And in terms of real number root, it's much easier for us to solve this question. Just imagine on the right side right here, we have I, we have a complicated expression on the right side, so it's it's much harder for us to solve this right side. But on the left side, we have real number root, and I think in 99% your teacher need a real number solution, and sometimes, of course, a teacher need a complex number, but generally, mostly, teacher need a real number root. So 2 to the x equal to 3, from here, x equal to, let's write our final answer, x equal to, we have log 3 over log 2, log 3 over, over log, over log 2. This is our one and only one real real number root. If you're interested in approximately answer, we have x approximately equal to 1.585. This is our approximately answer. Right now, let's write our final answer to this question. Right here, I'm going to split it by, yeah, we have right here our final, final answer. First of all, we need to write that our x first equal to log 3 over log log 2. In terms of in terms of approximately answer x approximately x first approximately equal to 
8, 5. But in the same way, it's really important to write about x second and third, because these two roots are complex roots. So it tells us that we have like complex roots. Don't forget about this. But if your teacher need from you that you need to find this complex root, you can easily plug in this y into this exponential equation. But mostly teachers are happy about this real number root and this is absolutely enough for you. So right now we can easily see a graph to this question. You can easily see this point of intersection 1.585 which is really important because a lot of students prefer this geometric perspective which is really great for, for everyone to see this from geometric side. Yeah, because a lot of students like algebraically but in the same way when you see this uh, solution in geometry, geometrically this is much e interesting for you to see this point of intersection and of course every each of these uh, algeb algebraic problem can be can be uh, interpreted in terms of geometry okay so this is a really interesting trick for you so thank you for your time thank you for your support thank you for your for your kind comments thank you for your like for your dislike i really appreciate it and i hope this this video is helpful for you and if this video is helpful don't forget to leave a like and write any comment and this is extremely important for me to see you respond down into the comment section and i hope you learn something new i hope you learn um, a lot of information in this video and i hope you 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 go in, you're doing great today so thank you for your time thank you for your support see you in the next videos have a great day